we want to determine the second derivative of the given function, f of x equals the square root of 6x plus 1. To determine the second derivative of the function, we'll find the derivative of the first derivative. So to determine the first derivative, we need to recognize that we have a composite function, so our inner function of 6x plus 1 is going to be equal to u, so we'll be applying the extended power rule, which includes the chain rule, to find the first derivative. When we have a square root, the index is 2, and we can think of this as the quantity 6x plus 1 to the first, so now we can rewrite this function as u to the power of 1 half. And so if we let u equal 6x plus 1, we know u prime is equal to 6. So now we have all the information we need to determine the first derivative. f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative of u to the 1 half, which will be 1 half, u to the 1 half minus 1, that'll be negative 1 half. And instead of writing u, we'll write 6x plus 1 times u prime, and we already said u prime was equal to 6. And since 1 half times 6 is equal to 3, we have 3 times the quantity 6x plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. Now this is our first derivative, but our goal is to determine the second derivative. And notice our first derivative is also a composite function, where the inner function would be equal to 6x plus 1, so again u is equal to 6x plus 1, and now we can rewrite this as 3u to the negative 1 half, so now it's in the form where we can find the derivative of the derivative, which is the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be equal to the derivative of 3u to the negative 1 half, which would be 3 times negative 1 half times u to the negative 1 half minus 1, that's negative 3 halves. But again, u is 6x plus 1 times u prime, and again, u prime is 6. So here's our second derivative of the given function, but we don't want to leave it in this form. So we have 3 times negative 1 half times 6, that's going to be negative 9, 6x plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. But to make this exponent positive, we can think of this as being over 1. So if we move this quantity down to the denominator, the exponent will be positive 3 halves. So we'd have negative 9 all over the quantity 6x plus 1 raised to the 3 halves power. And this is normally how the second derivative would be expressed, but since the original function was in radical form, we could rewrite this in radical form. So let's go ahead and show what that would look like. We'd have negative 9 all over the square root of the quantity 6x plus 1 to the third power, which would simplify since we have three equal factors underneath this radical, we could rewrite this as negative 9 all over the quantity 6x plus 1 times the square root of 6x plus 1. And one last thing you might see is that we know the number underneath the square root has to be positive, so you might see absolute values around the quantity 6x plus 1. And just in case you need some more explanation on what happened here, remember 6x plus 1 is equal to u, so if we had the square root of u to the third, we'd have three factors of u, so here's a perfect square factor which simplifies to u square root u, but again u has to be positive because this radicand has to be positive, so we'd have the absolute value of u times the square root of u, which we have here using 6x plus 1 for u. So again, this last step here might not be necessary. Most textbooks would probably list this as the second derivative, but it is true that it could be expressed in this form here in radical form. I hope you found this helpful.